Greetings, mighty companions. Anna Kajawa here, and we are doing A Course in Miracles, the complete and annotated edition today. So this is A Course in Miracles, but it is the complete and annotated edition, which is the newest and latest edition of A Course in Miracles, which is, in my perception, the most original version of A Course in Miracles. So this is A Course in Miracles, but it is the unedited version, okay? So uncensored, unedited, the way we like it. So that is what is in this Wednesday class. I do other Course in Miracles classes where I'm teaching the edited editions, and this is the unedited version. So sit back, strap in your seatbelt, and uh, let us hear the unedited, uncensored version of A Course in Miracles. And so I'm so happy to see Julia and Maya and Greg and everybody who's joining and Brie. I have a studio audience with me tonight as I have been having on Wednesdays. <laughs> All right. So that means that we are going to have some fun. Hi, Maya. And, um, and hi, Kwana. All right. So we are going to pick up where we left off in our last session, which is chapter four. Section two, the devoted teacher. And we are starting on paragraph number eight. So let me make sure everything is plugged in and it is wonderful. Okay. So hi, Kwana. All right. So um, what we're talking about, the title of this section is called the devoted teacher. So we're talking about the devoted teacher and who is the devoted teacher. And the devoted teacher is the person who said, I really want to learn. I've decided I really want to learn. Once and for all, I want to learn. I want to learn a better way. I really want to learn what A Course in Miracles is talking about. I want to learn how to forgive. I want to learn how to be happy. I want to learn how to have lasting peace. Okay, you do? All right. So A Course in Miracles says that the only way to learn something is to teach it. Okay? So that is what we are doing. So of Course in Miracles says you want to learn it, you got to teach it. And that's very different. The Course in Miracles is saying something very different. If you want to learn something, then the only way to learn it is to teach it. Okay? So in A Course in Miracles, those who want to learn A Course in Miracles have got to teach it. But not just teach it in any regular, ordinary way. Teach it in a devoted way, which means in a consistent way and an authentic way. So that is what we are talking about. So in other words, whatever it is that you want to learn, a Course in Miracles is saying you need to teach it. If you want to learn it, you got to teach it. So, and that's how A Course in Miracles is different than other programs. In other programs, it says, well, first you got to learn it, and then you teach it. A Course in Miracles say, ah, if you want to learn it, you're going to have to teach it, which means demonstrate it. But here we are like, oh, I don't, I don't know enough to teach A Course in Miracles. I don't know enough to teach this. I, 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 I don't know enough to... Course Miracles says, yes, you do. You're going to learn it as you share it, as you teach it, as you demonstrate it. Whatever it is that is your gift, whatever it is that is your love, whatever it is that is your joy, whatever it is that is your love, your joy, that is your gift to the world. Okay? Course of Miracles talks about how what you're here to do is to be happy and to share your happiness with the world. Why? Because that's what the world needs. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world uh, is a depressing place. And so, uh, Course in Miracles is saying what this world really needs is a demonstration of joy, peace, and love. And so, whatever brings you joy, peace, and love, whatever it is, is what you what is your special gift to the world all right but of course the miracles are saying that we have a lot of excuses and a lot of fears of giving we have a lot of fears of sharing our gifts with the world we have a lot of fears about teaching about sharing our gifts with the world and that's what this section deals with Course in Miracles says you will only learn when you teach it, but we're full of fear about teaching. 
we're full of fear about giving our gifts to the world. So this section talks about all those fears <clears throat> that we have um, about sharing our gifts with the world. But A Course in Miracles is saying that's the only way you can learn it. So I, the only way I can learn A Course in Miracles, for instance, is to teach it. But I have all these fears about teaching it. You know, I don't know enough. Uh, I'm afraid of change. And so this A Course in Miracles says your main fear about teaching about sharing your gifts with the world is that as you teach these ideas, as you give to the world your gifts, The Course in Miracles says you think your fear of teaching is, well, am I good enough and nobody needs me and I don't know it well enough and um, people are going to judge me and, you know, there's already plenty of other good teachers in the world. Nobody needs me and I don't know what I'm doing. The Course in Miracles says you think that's your fear of teaching but it's not. You have a deeper fear. Mm -hmm. Your real fear of sharing your gifts with the world is that when you do it, it's going to change you. It's going to change you. It's going to change you at the deepest, most fundamental levels, and that's your real fear. Mm -hmm. Of course, the miracle says you're afraid to teach. You're afraid to give your gifts to the world because you're afraid of change. You share your gifts with the world, it's going to change you. And the Course in Miracles says we're afraid of change. And the reason we're afraid of change is because our first experience of change was not so good. You know, the, our first experience of change was we were in the ecstatic, completely fulfilling oneness with God and the universe. Okay. That was, and then our first experience of change was from the ecstatic bliss of oneness un, into a body where we're not really one. We're separate <laughs> and alone and on our own, right? So A Course in Miracles says that our first experience of change was from the ecstatic bliss of oneness into the pain and the separation, the pain of separation. And so now we're afraid of change. We're change shy. You've heard of being commitment shy? We're change shy, okay? So A Course in Miracles says that's your real fear of giving your gifts to the world, of being a teacher of love and peace and truth um, that you really are. You're afraid to give your gifts to the world. You're afraid to teach. You're afraid to demonstrate your gifts because you're afraid of the change that it will bring within you. So, um, so this section is addressing that. It's addressing our deeper fears of teaching. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's telling us what your real fear of sharing your gifts with the world really is. Now, what's the value in that? The value in that is that once you understand what your deeper fears are, your real fears are, of sharing your gifts with the world, then you can look at it and go, oh, well, that's, that's nothing. And then you might give your gifts to the world, which is what you need and the world along with you. All right, so... That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about you, devoted teacher. What's it going to take for you to be a devoted teacher of that which you want to learn, what you want to experience, okay? What we're here to do, what we are here to do is to be a good teacher. What we are here to do is to give to the world that which we want to have, that which we want to experience. You ever heard that phrase, be the change you want to see in the world? Anybody ever heard that phrase? It's very popular right now. Be the change you want to be in the world. Be the change you want for the world. That's what this is talking about. Of course, a miracle is saying the same thing. Whatever it is that you want for the world, that's what you're going to have to give to the world. So no more waiting around for other people to change in the world, for the world to be peaceful. Okay, no more of that. Um, whatever it is that you want to experience in the world, in your life, stop waiting for somebody else to give it to you. The way you have the kind of life and the relationship and the kind of experience in your body that you want to have, you got to teach it. Of course, I remember saying, you're going to have to teach it if you want to learn it. 
Okay, so what do you want? Well, I want peace on earth, and I want peace in my body, and I want abundance. I want a healed world. I want a world that's not perpetually, chronically at war. How about you? So if that's what you want, then you're going to have to teach it. Teaching is learning. According to this section, according to A Course in Miracles, teaching is learning. And so here we are, like trying to learn, 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 learn. I want to get, get, get. But I, I'm like doing it in every way besides teaching it. All right. And we have a lot of excuses about why we're not going to teach it. I'm not ready to teach it. I'm not prepared to teach it. I'm not qualified to teach it. I'm not going to teach it. There's plenty of other people teaching it. Blah, 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 blah. That's all your fear of learning it. And that's all your fear of change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. All right, I'm so glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining in this. <laughs> Please feel free to share and join. I really okay. appreciate your emotion. Okay. I really yeah. do. It's awesome. Okay. It's beautiful. It's so innocent. It's so welcome. It's yes. convicting. Sometimes it's all I can do to not cry also exactly. while I'm while I'm teaching the Course in Miracles. Okay. All right. So now we're starting on um, it says so I'm just gonna just gonna start with this um, this 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 sentence from paragraph seven. It says, the ultimate reason why learning, which means teaching, is frightening is because true learning does lead to the relinquishment, not the destruction, of the ego to the light of spirit. Okay? That is what we're really afraid of. Why is, why is it that um, we're really afraid of teaching and learning? Because real, meaning authentic, teaching and learning leads to the relinquishment, not the destruction, but the relinquishment of the ego. And your ego is always afraid of that. So we're afraid of teaching and we're afraid of learning because the, ultimately that leads to the relinquishment of the ego. No, not the destruction of the ego. I mean, the ego doesn't need to be destroyed because it's not real. So your ego doesn't need to be destroyed. It doesn't need to be vanquished. It just needs to be let go of. Oh, that's not true. I let go of it. Okay, and that is why our egos are really afraid of teaching and learning. All right. Now, it says, um, it says here, paragraph eight, teaching and learning are your greatest strengths now. So, you need some strength. I need some strength. Do you need some strength? I do. I need some strength. Okay. So our greatest strengths now are teaching and learning. Now remember, what is learning? In, in A Course in Miracles, learning is teaching. Where does learning come from? Teaching. What is teaching? Demonstrating. What is teaching? Sharing. Okay. It's like, I want to learn, but I don't want to share it. Why? Because, oh, I'm so insecure. I'm so, I, I lack self-confidence. People may judge me, people may judge me, and so I'm afraid to share, people may judge me, blah, 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 blah. When the Course of Miracles is like, uh, you know, you're gonna have to face that fear of sharing it because that's the only way you're gonna learn it. And it's your greatest strength now. Now, why is it that teaching, which means learning, is your greatest strength now? It's because you've got to, you must change your mind, your own mind, and help others to, to change theirs. So in other words, your greatest strength right now is you changing your own mind and helping other people to do that. That's where it's at, okay? If you feel weak, if you feel incompetent, <laughs> if you feel like oh, everybody else is doing it better than you, nobody needs your gifts, then you, then your greatest strength is going to be teaching, which means learning. That's because, because teaching, which means learning, is the only way to change your own mind and to help others to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, everybody, why are we here right now? in a body at this time on planet earth 
we are here right now at this time on planet Earth. Why? Because you must change your mind and help others to do this same, to change their minds. That is what, that's all there is to do here. That's what's most important for you to do here. Change your own mind and help others to change their minds. That is your strength right now because that is what is most needed here on planet Earth at this time. Yes, that's right. So that's what your greatest strength is because that is what is most needed on Earth at this time. For you to change your own mind and to help others to change their own minds. Okay, you think something else is more valuable than that? That's because you don't know what's going on. <laughs> you don't know what's going on right here, right now, right here on planet Earth. What planet Earth right now most needs is for you to change your mind and for you to help other people change your mind. And however it is that you cha help other change your own mind and help others to change their minds, that's your special function. That's what you're here to teach. And that's what you're here to learn. All right, so that's what is, that's what time it is. All right, so welcome Deborah Quinnen and Bree all and Sarka. Lovely to see you all here. Don't forget, if you have a question about what it is saying or how to apply it, feel free to ask your questions. Put it in all caps. That helps to um, catch my attention. So um, just know that of course in miracles is for practical application. And the goal of all of my classes is number one, to hear what A Course of Miracles is saying, which is a feat in itself, that's a miracle in itself. And then number two, to apply it. Okay, so that's always the purpose of my sessions. What did it say and how do I apply it to what I'm going through, okay? And Julia says, OMG, I can change someone else's mind. Uh, question mark, I am struggling <laughs> to change my mind. Exactly, you got it. How do you help other people to change their mind? You learn how to change your own mind. How do you change your own mind? Help others to change their minds. It's like this like beautiful circle. You can either do it by helping them to change your mind, or you can do it by changing your mind. Wherever you start is fine. Okay, but that he says you must, what does it say? You must change your own mind and help others to change theirs. That is why you are here. Now you may think you have another purpose here, but according to A Course in Miracles, you are here on planet Earth at this auspicious time mm -hmm. to change your own mind so that you can help others to change their mind. That is why you're here. Um, and so one, you know, once you go, okay, I get it. I get why I was born in a body at this time on planet Earth. I get it. Okay, great. I'm going to be about that. It says your life changes. Your life changes. And one of the things that changes about your life is that when you remember what you're here for, what you're here to do, and you devote yourself to that, then you unlock all the support of the universe. All of a sudden, you go on cosmic scholarship, and that's pretty good. You know, if you've ever been on federal or government scholarship, this is way better. You know, in other words, you don't have to pay it back with interest. So, <laughs> so that's what we're going that for. That's way better. That's way better. Cosmic scholarship, way better than government scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. So you go. And that's what, that's what it means to say your greatest strengths now. Why is it that teaching and learning is my greatest strengths now? Because when I devote myself to that, then I unlock all of the cosmic support of the universe. Yeah. The universe wants mankind and all the children and all the sentient creatures of earth to be healed, to be released mm -hmm. from guilt from the belief in lack, from the belief in separation and death, all the universe created by love wants to support mankind in the awakening from the belief in separation and death. And so anybody like you, including you, including me, that says, okay, I'll devote myself to the teaching and learning of the truth that we're not separate, there's no separation, 
that I'm not a body, I'm spirit, only love is real. Anybody who said who is willing to devote themselves to teaching and learning the truth will get cosmic support toward that purpose. Okay, so so that's why teaching and learning are your greatest strengths now. All right. So that's why he's saying that right now the universe and God and all the angels, all everybody, everybody that is invested in the awakening of mankind, they are going to support you when you devote yourself to teaching and learning this, these ideas. That's why teaching and learning these ideas are your greatest strengths now. So that's what I learned early on in my study of A Course in Miracles. I learned early on that all I had to do was learn A Course in Miracles. All I had to do was like, okay, I'm willing to learn A Course in Miracles, and I'm willing to teach A Course in Miracles. I don't know A Course in Miracles, but I'm willing to learn A Course in Miracles, and I'm willing to teach A Course in Miracles. And I did not know how to teach A Course in Miracles at all. I was 19. I was like, okay, fine, I'll teach A Course in Miracles. <laughs> I don't know anything. I've only been studying blah, blah, blah. But, um, and so what I learned was all that as soon as I was willing to learn to teach A Course in Miracles and learn A Course in Miracles, which is the same thing, um, I learned that it unlocked for me whatever I needed whenever I needed it. Okay, that's why teaching and learning these ideas are your greatest strengths now because they will unlock the treasures of heaven they will unlock for you whatever you need it whenever you need it as long as you need it mm -hmm. okay that's what it means to say teaching and learning are your greatest strengths now mm -hmm. okay just so you know now um, in other words when you devote yourself to changing your own mind and helping others to do the same then all your needs will be provided because that is what the universe needs. So if you are willing to support the mankind and the children of God in awakening from separation and lack and death and suffering, guess what? You will be supported. That's why teaching and learning are your greatest strengths now. Great. So are you willing to devote yourself to that? Are you ready to devote yourself to that? Okay. So that's the question. Now, how are we doing? Questions. Deborah says, I just tuned in and I just got a message in 10 seconds. Pow. Right on. <laughs> awesome. That's the beauty and the power of A Course in Miracles. You can tune in anytime, anywhere, and, and hear what you need to hear. Thank you for saying that, Deborah. And Julia says, OMG, I can change someone else's mind. Okay, right. And Greg says, Proof you're always on time, Deborah. You're always on time, Deborah. <laughs> I love it. Now, it says, um, so it says in paragraph eight, it is pointless to refuse to tolerate change or changing because you believe that you can demonstrate by doing so that the separation never occurred. What does that mean? That means the dreamer who doubts, doubts the reality of their dream while they're still dreaming is not really healing the level split. You have dreamed of a separated ego and you have believed in a world which rests upon a separated ego. This is very real to you. You cannot undo this illusion by doing nothing, which means not changing. It says, so, if you are willing to renounce the guardian, oh, wait a minute, I've already read all that. Okay. I am really on paragraph nine, but I will finish paragraph eight. This is what, that's paragraph eight, okay. It says, you, it says, this is, you did it. If you are willing to renounce the role of guardian, guardian of your thought system and open it to me, I will correct it very gently and I will lead you home. Okay. So, of course, the miracles are saying that, that here's what we're here to do. We, you must change your mind and you must help others to do, to change theirs. That's what you're here for. That's how the healing of the world occurs. And once you make that decision to become a devoted teacher, which is someone who's like, I will change, I'm devoted to changing my own mind and helping other people to do the same, you unlock the resources and the support of the universe. And it says, but to do that, you've got to renounce the role of guardian of your own thought system. If you, to change your mind, 
you got to do this. you got to stop going, well, however I see it, that's the only way to see it. However I perceive it, that's the truth. The way I see it, that's reality and no question. Course in Miracles says for you to change your mind and to help others to do the same, you're going to have to renounce the role of guardian of your thought system and open it up to love and open it up to spirit. And when you say, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what anything including this means. I renounce the role of guardian of my thought system. I don't know what this means. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I am. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, when you renounce the role of guardian of your thought system, then spirit will do what? Then spirit will correct your thought system very gently, will correct your thought system very gently. And what leads you home? Okay. So that's how you change your mind. Okay. Isn't that beautiful to hear how you change your mind? It said you must change your mind and help others to do the same. But how do you change your mind? You say, uh, I don't know. I renounce the role of guardian in my thought system. I don't know what this means. I don't know what I mean. I don't know what I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I don't know anything, especially if I'm not blissed out happy. Literally. I don't know what anything means. But there is something within me who does. And so something within me that does, love, I ask you to be the guardian of my thought system. Decide for me what this means, love. Decide for me what to do, oh, love. Decide for me what this is, love. Decide for me how to interpret this, love. And it says once you do that, that love will correct your false belief system that you learned from the past that didn't make you happy and lead you home. And it will do it very gently. It won't tell you, what an idiot, I can't believe you ever thought that. It will correct your old belief system from your past very gently and lead you home. Beautiful. Now, that was paragraph eight. Now we're at paragraph nine. It says, every good teacher hopes to give their students so much of their own thinking that your students will know, will someday, one day, no longer need you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so now we know what a good teacher is. Mm -hmm. What's a good teacher? A good teacher is someone who someday, when their students go, you taught me so good, I don't even need you anymore. Have you ever had people who were using your insight and your support and your help for a while, but then one day you never heard from them again? Anybody ever had that? Mm -hmm. They were using you, please help me, please help me. And you were like helping them, helping them, helping them, and then you never heard from them again. Okay, That's what happens with a good teacher. Mm -hmm. a, the goal of a good teacher is that one day the people that you are helping will no longer need you, okay? Because why? Because you gave them so much of your um, your own thinking. Now, they learned how to think for themselves from you, and so they didn't need you to think for them anymore. That means you're a good teacher, and that's the goal of a good teacher. Okay. Now, it's important that we learn what it means to be a good teacher. Why? Because what we just heard, if you're gonna be a good learner, that means you're gonna have to be a good teacher. See, that's what's different about A Course in Miracles. You want to be a good teacher? I mean, you want to be a good learner? You want to learn A Course in Miracles? That means you got to teach it. Mm -hmm. That's what's different about this curriculum. Mm -hmm. You want to learn it? You're going to have to teach it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to teach it. Okay, great. And to be a good teacher means that your goal is to give so much of your thinking to the people who come to you that one day they'll be like, I got it, now I can think for myself. Thank you very much, I don't need you. And then you never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. That's a good teacher. And it says, this is the one real goal of what, of who? The parent, the teacher, and the therapist. Okay, I happen to be all three, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the teacher, the therapist, and what else? The parent, the parent. yes, I'm um, all three. Um, it says, this goal of being a good teacher 
will not be achieved by those who believe that they will lose their child or pupil or patient if they succeed in teaching, if they're a good teacher, okay? So in other words, it's impossible to convince the ego of this because this goes against all of the ego's own laws, okay? So in other words, um, the goal of a good teacher or a parent or therapist, okay? Are you a teacher? a parent or a therapist well yes you are <laughs> you're one of the three I you're one of the three so or you're all three like me and so um, now remember you can't learn this unless you teach it okay and so uh, that means that okay I'm gonna have to teach it okay well here's what it takes to teach it mm -hmm. you're gonna have to have this goal of teaching it and the teach the goal of teaching it is that one you will give everyone your pupils your children your patients your friends anybody who is in your experience the goal here if you're gonna learn it is to give them so much of your own thinking which is a course of miracles that they no longer need you now if you think that after you've given them so much of your own thinking and they no longer need you that that's a loss if you think it's a loss when your kid no longer calls you oh what should i do and if you think it's a loss that your friends um stop calling you up what should i do blah, 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 blah. if you think it's a loss that they stop calling you up to ask you for help if you think that's a loss then um it says you won't become a good teacher. And what happens if you don't become a good teacher? You're not gonna be a good learner. You're not gonna learn it. So if you think that by giving to your friends and your family and your children and your patients, if you think that it's a loss when they no longer need you, then you're not gonna be a good teacher, which means you're not gonna be a good learner. Okay, so do you wanna learn A Course of Miracles? Okay, then that means that when it is that people who have been coming to you for these ideas, for help, for assistance, for learning, when they come to you and you give them your own thinking from A Course in Miracles and then they stop calling you, um, remember, that means you did a good job, okay? Remember that. It, when, you, when people you have been giving the truth to whoever that is, stop calling you. Remember, you did a good job. A good teacher's goal is that they receive so much of your thinking that they no longer need you and they stop calling. <laughs> Including children, friends, patients, pupils, etc., etc. Wow. So it says, um, now, okay, so let me just stop there for a second. Questions or comments? Um, okay, hello Demi and Carolina, good to see you here. And Bree says, if I think it's a loss when they no longer come to me, I won't become a good teacher. Love this. Then, yes, beautiful. All right. So, is Bree, is Gloria watching? Is that why you said hi? Okay. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Gloria. Hello. All right. Okay. So, we're talking here about what it means to be a good teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important, even if you don't think you're a teacher, because according to A Course in Miracles, if you really want to be a good learner, um, or a good patient, or a good student, or whatever, if you want to learn something, you're going to have to teach it. So it's important that we learn what it means to really be a good teacher, okay? If teaching is learning, then we got to learn how to teach, right? And all those excuses, I can't be a, I can't be a teacher of A Course in Miracles. I'm not. I'm, I don't even know A Course in Miracles. Uh-uh. No. The Course in Miracles is different. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn A Course in Miracles, you're going to have to teach it. If you want to learn anything that's real, you're going to have to learn how to teach it. So A Course in Miracles is like, great, I'm going to teach you how to teach it. Mm -hmm. So all you people who want to learn it, pay attention. This is how to learn it because this is how to teach it. Okay? Right. And so the first thing about teaching is how 
to interpret it when people who have been coming to you for support, for help, for assistance, how to interpret it correctly when they stop calling, <laughs> when they stop coming around, and when they stop coming to your class. And they ghost you. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and they ghost you, okay? This is the first thing that all good teachers need to hear. Isn't that funny when it starts off with good teachers? The first thing is what, how to interpret it correctly when people ghost you. <laughs> That's so funny. Exactly. That's so funny. Uh, okay, so, you know, and I'm all three. So I've ha I'm having to learn all three. I'm a therapist who gives my all of my thinking when, when, my, uh, when my clients come. And there have been so many times when I gave all, I gave my best, I gave my all to my clients. And, and there was like, and it seemed like it was a miraculous session that I'd never hear from them again. Until months or years later, they call me and go, that was so good that I just didn't need you for all these months or years later. And, that, and that's the way I finally got it. Oh, okay. You know, it's not because I was a bad teacher or therapist. It was like they got what they needed so good that they didn't need me anymore. And that was a, that's the ultimate compliment. That's my goal. Now, if I'm not a good teacher, then I'm going to take it personal and I'm going to attack myself. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a parent. Okay, I'm also having that experience where my, te my kid is a teenager and she's like, I don't need you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, where she isn't coming to me anymore. Um, for advice and for guidance, you know, I have to like find things out later, you know, like well, How do you feel about that? Um, and there's a temptation to feel like I've been a bad parent and Of course miracles are saying no, that's the wrong interpretation The correct interpretation is you did your job and that's why she doesn't need you anymore because you gave her so much of your own thinking that she doesn't need you anymore um, So first rule about being a good teacher is uh, don't take it personal when those who you have been given guidance and of course miracles thinking to um, start calling you or your children or your friends mm -hmm. if that's what you've been giving to your friends and your children and they stop calling this is the correct way to interpret that so that you don't um, so that you can become a good teacher all right so be a thank you great <laughs> and hi Gloria good to see you thank you Gloria for giving for releasing our Brie back to us for a little while thank you you did good she's awesome you did good with her thank you Gloria all right so here we go so it says this now it's impossible to convince your ego of this that you're a good teacher when they no longer need you anymore because that goes against all of the ego's own laws. But remember that laws are set up to protect the continuity of the system in which the lawmaker believes. So, it's natural enough for your ego to try to perpetuate itself. Of course, your ego is going to try to perpetuate itself. That's natural. Once you have made your ego, but it's not natural for you to want to obey the ego's laws unless you believe in the ego's laws. Your ego cannot make this choice because of the nature of the ego's origin, but you can make this choice because of the nature of your own origin. Okay, so your ego, um, your ego is always going to be trying to perpetuate itself. That's what the ego that's what the ego is and that's what the ego does. So the ego is always going to be wanting to um, have you obey it, okay? You know, the ego is gonna be like, obey me. <laughs> okay, obey me, listen to me. Do it so, or else. Do it or else. Do it, do it, okay? Your ego, it's very natural for your ego to want to keep itself going. Your ego is like, a, your ego is a parasite. Once that parasite is born, it's very natural for that parasite to want to keep itself going by feeding off of you, okay? But, it's so it's natural for the ego to want to keep, try to stay alive. Once that parasite is born, then that's natural for that parasite to want to stay alive, okay? 
that's natural. But it's not natural for you to continue to obey your ego, okay? That's not natural, okay? It's natural for the ego to want to stay alive, but it's not natural for you um, because, says, because um, unless you believe in your ego. So you don't have to um, obey the ego. You don't have to obey the ego. Why? Because the ego didn't create you. Okay? You can't you the ego came from you, but you didn't come from the ego. So it says, um, the ego cannot make this choice to stop obeying itself because of its origin, but you can cease to obey your ego. Okay? Now what does that mean for you to stop obeying your ego? Okay, um, that's the question. So for a long time, you have been obeying your ego. Your ego said, be afraid. And you went, okay, afraid of what? And your ego said, blah, 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 blah. You said, all right. So because you didn't come from your ego, it's not natural for you to want to continue your ego or obey your ego. All right. So now you're saying that I don't have to obey my ego. Hmm. I wonder what my life would be like if I wasn't obeying my ego. Wow. I wonder what my. Well, I wonder what it would be like in my body mm. if I wasn't obeying my ego. I wasn't listening to fear. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's natural for your ego to want to continue the fear and continue the guilt. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, ego's trying to su survive. Mm -hmm. But is it natural for you to continue to listen to your ego? Mm -hmm. um, of course, America is saying, no, it's not. And so, okay, great. So you're saying that my ego could speak to me and say, be afraid, feel guilty, you're separate, you suck, you're, 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 you should be hopeless. Be depressed. Of course, Miracle is saying it's not natural for you to go, okay, whatever you say, ego. <laughs> so, you know, you know, the question Miracle says that's not natural because you didn't come from the ego. The ego is not your source. Ego didn't create you. Fear didn't create you. You created the ego. You made the ego. It's silly. Silly. <laughs> And so it's so what's natural for you is where you hear the voice of fear who is telling you to be afraid and feel guilty and be depressed and and um, you don't deserve anything. The Course of Miracles is saying what's natural for you is you don't have to obey that. You know, whatever it is your ego tells you to feel or to fear, you do not have to obey that. You could say, nah, you know what? You're not my source. So I'm not gonna listen to you. You're not the only voice in he in here. I don't have to listen to you. Yeah, you almost you know? got me. You almost yeah, got it's me. natural for the ego to try to keep itself going with fear and guilt in me and continue to use me for its fearful, guilty purposes. You know, that's natural for the parasite to want to continue to use its host. But it's not natural for me, who didn't come from the ego, to continue to listen to it. What is natural for me is to go, you know, no, ego, you came from me, ego. I'm not supposed to listen to you. <laughs> you got to listen to me, you know. That's what is natural. Now, all right, how are we doing? So, Bree says, well, that's good news. It's not natural to obey the ego, the negative thoughts of fear and doubt. Exactly. All right. Okay, so that was paragraph nine. So any questions or comments in here in our live studio audience before we check in with our Facebook audience? What's a good, what's a good way when um, the ego seems so pervasive, the mm -hmm. thought seems so convincing mm -hmm. for someone to, to shift that mm -hmm. thought to the truth? Mm -hmm of love and sustainability and joy and peace when they're succumb with that that thought that produces that feeling of, of depression or, or fear or anxiety or, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So so Bri is asking when that the voice of the ego is very strong, 
very compelling. It seems to like have taken over your brain. (laughs) It seems like that's the only option. That's the only reality there is, is what the fearful mind, the lack and limiting mind is producing. What's the best way to to shift that? To shift that. The true true voice, the true expression of love and peace. Because I know many people who have this uh, idea of what that is intellectually mm-hmm. but 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 like to actually shift it was right. the, I mean obviously studying yes, yes. Yes, and prayer and meditation right is there is there any yes. way within that moment of feeling you've succumbed to the ego's yes. thoughts that can shift you out of it absolutely yeah okay great question so Bria is saying when you're like when you're, you know, seem to be being taken over by that fear and that guilt, what is the best way to shift that or to overcome that? Well, of course, in miracles, um, says that the way to shift that is to remember what a course in miracles is saying that if if what you are feeling or hearing is is seems to be against you, meaning negative, meaning not loving, not supportive. Like our, our brother Greg always says, ask yourself, is this voice that I'm hearing for me or against me? Right. And so just that simple question is a way to shift it. And of course, in Miracles is teaching us that is what I'm feeling or hearing loving? It, it, is it positive? Is it supportive? Is it saying you're innocent, you're beautiful, you deserve it all, you're innocent, you're loving, you're lovable? Is the voice that you're hearing, is it for you or against you? And in other words, is it love or fear? And so that's a very simple, easy question that anybody can ask that is like, it's like the sword of truth. As soon as you ask that question, then then what's true and what's untrue is separated. All of a sudden, you can see the difference between the love and the fear. So A Course in Miracles is saying that there's only two emotions and love or fear. And at any moment you can ask that question, you know, um, is this voice for me or against me? Is this love or fear? And as soon as you ask that question, then it becomes clear, you know, what voice is against you and what voice is for you. Now, once that is clear, now you can choose. But you can't choose and while it's all muddy and confused. And so once you've like been able to separate out, okay, this voice is loving and this voice tells me that I suck and I'm a failure and I should be depressed forevermore and go take a good and now go do something to relieve my depression, like chocolate or alcohol or whatever, you know. Whatever, get, 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 you know. Um, Once I can see the difference between the two voices, which of course in Miracles teaches us to do, now I can choose. But I can't make a good choice, I can't make a real choice until I see the difference between the two voices and the two choices. So, so of course in Miracles says something like this. It says, say to yourself, um, well, uh, at least I can decide I don't like the way I feel right now. And so I hope I'm wrong. You know, I don't like the way I feel right now. I, and I, I, I don't like the way I feel right now. I feel fear. I feel pain. I feel anger. I feel depression. I feel despair. I don't like the way I feel right now. And so I hope I'm wrong. And what can I lose by asking? And then the asking is, is there a different way to interpret this? You know, uh, the Course Miracle says the way you're feeling right now is the result of your interpretation. And if the way you feel right now is not good, that means you've made an interpretation according to fear. And you could just say, I don't like the way I feel right now. Um, Maybe there's another way of interpreting this. I'd like another way of interpreting this. What can I lose by asking? And then you ask, is there another way of looking at this, Spirit? And Spirit goes, oh, awesome. I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, there is. There is another interpretation of what you're perceiving and what you're going through that would produce only joy and power and positivity and productivity. Okay? And then Spirit is like, here it is. So thank you for that question. Yeah, thank you for answering. Yes, that. beautiful. Okay. 
Awesome. Now, all right, awesome. So here we are. Now we're on paragraph 10, and it says this. Egos can clash in any situation, but souls cannot clash at all. Oh, so e only egos fight. <laughs> only egos fight. <laughs> only <laughs> egos clash. Okay, so are you clashing? Are you wanting to clash? Are you wanting to correct somebody if you think they're wrong? <laughs> I am going to correct Cheryl for your own good. Okay, your own that's a clash, good. by the way. You know, um, you're not right, I'm right, and I'm going to tell you how I'm all right. That's a clash. Only egos clash. And now egos can clash in any situation or any relationship, but souls never, cannot clash at all, okay? So if you're coming from your soul, you're not gonna be clashing. You're not gonna be trying to correct people. You're not gonna be trying to prove people wrong. And, if you, and people who are coming from their souls are not gonna be trying to prove you wrong or clash with you, okay? Or trying to correct you. Only egos do that. Only egos are like, mm -mm, I'm right, you're wrong, and now let's clash, okay? Only egos do that. Souls don't, okay? Now, it, so if you perceive a teacher as merely a, quote, larger ego, then you're going to be afraid because to enlarge an ego is to increase separation anxiety. Yeah. Now, so not, mind you, we're talking here now, we're talking about good teachers, and now we're talking about the ego. So the ego is a teacher too. You got your, the good teacher in you, and you got a bad teacher. You got a good teacher, and you got the ego who's the bad teacher now you got two teachers in you now it says don't engage in this foolishness what foolishness of course in miracles of course in miracles is so direct it just does don't do it <laughs> don't clash don't be that kind of bad teacher that could clash to prove or to correct or teach don't be that kind of teacher don't engage in such foolishness a good teacher doesn't clash with other egos in order to prove or to teach something, okay? Only a bad teacher does that, okay? Only a bad teacher goes, I'm right and you're wrong and I'm gonna prove it to you, okay? So look, I got this degree and that degree and you got no degree, okay? Only bad teachers called the ego engage in such foolishness of clashing with other egos in order to teach something. So don't engage in that foolishness. You don't want to teach anybody by te clashing with their ego, by clashing with what they believe. That's not being a good teacher. That's being a bad teacher. That's being the ego, okay? So he says, now, here's what the good teacher says to you, okay? The good, our good teacher, our teacher, our higher mind teacher says this to us. I will teach with you, awesome, and I will live with you if you will think with me. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. All right, good teacher in me. There's a good teacher in you. There's a bad teacher in you. <laughs> The bad teacher in you goes, I'm going to prove to them that I'm right and they're wrong. And they're going to see that I'm right. They're going to go, you're right. Okay. That's the bad teacher in you. We call that the ego. Yes. That's the ego. That's the teacher that's always willing to clash in order to be right when it's wrong. But the good teacher in you says, I will teach with you and I will live with you if what? If you will think with me. So... Would you like to live, would you like the good teacher, the higher teacher, the ultimate teacher to live with you yeah. and to teach with you? Would you like that? Okay, here's how it goes. You'll think, if you will think with the good teacher, the good, the wise teacher, beautiful. And then the good teacher within us says this to us, but my goal will always be to absolve you finally from the need for a teacher. Okay. That's what a good teacher always says. I want to give you so much of what I think that you no longer need me. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bad teacher goes, I need you to need me. I want you to be dependent on me. You need me. I want to possess you. Yes. You need 
me, be dependent on me, make me your only teacher. That's what a bad teacher says, okay? So um, when you are siding with the good teacher and you, and you, all you want to do is give so much of your own thinking to those who are sent to you that they no longer need you because now they think just like you. Okay, that's how you know that you're aligning your own consciousness with a good teacher, okay? So, that was paragraph 10. Okay, any questions or comments on paragraph 10? <sighs> I'll take a breath. Okay, so remember, the title of this section is The Devoted Teacher, which means the good teacher. And it's important that we hear about the good teacher because it's the only way to learn. So if you really want to learn A Course in Miracles, you're going to have to learn how to teach it. And this is telling us how to teach A Course in Miracles. And so if you think that you're not ready or able or capable to teach A Course in Miracles until you learn it, you've not heard what A Course in Miracles or the teacher of A Course in Miracles is telling you. Okay. Course in Miracles is saying is not saying, once you be a good Course in Miracles student, then you can teach it. It's not mm -hmm. saying that. Mm -hmm. It's saying, if you want to learn a Course in Miracles, you're gonna to have to teach it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you want to teach a Course in Miracles because you want to learn it, then you got to learn that that the goal here is to give so much of your Course in Miracles thinking to people that they no longer need you. So the goal of being a good teacher is that people are not dependent on you. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of the goal of codependency. Right. And we're all used to codependency in our relationships. We have no idea <laughs> what it means to have relationships where we're not codependent. Mm -hmm. We think that a good relationship is where they need me and I need them. Mm -hmm. okay? And in an equal amount at the same time. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so it's, it, now it says in paragraph 11, so the goal of I'm going to give you so much of what I've learned from A Course in Miracles that you no longer need me, that's the goal of a good teacher. Well, that's the opposite of the ego-oriented teacher. That's the opposite of the ego-oriented teacher's goal. Okay, what is an ego-oriented teacher's goal? Okay, it is this. Okay, the ego-oriented teacher's goal is where you are concerned with the effect of your ego on other people's egos. In other words, where you are interpreting their interaction with you as a means of your ego preservation. Right. Okay? So what is an ego-oriented teacher? A bad teacher is like, did I affect you good? You know, where an ego-oriented teacher is, I'm just concerned about how my teaching affected you. But that's just to preserve my ego. So it's just ego-boosting, right. it's just ego-boosting pride, right. okay? Um, did my ego affect your ego? Mm -hmm. Did, was my pride able to be boosted by your response to what I shared with you? Right. Vanity. Vanity. Okay. And this is teaching, this is teaching for whatever it is that you're teaching, by the way. Okay. So an ego teacher, an ego-oriented teacher, all they're concerned about is how good did I give it to you? How good did I affect it to you? But only as, you know, uh, you know, my ego. Okay. I'm here only here to boost my pride. Okay. Um, in other words, interpreting our interaction as a means of ego preservation or pride preservation okay in other words do you still need me how much do you need me you still need me and you need me good and you only you need me more than other teachers awesome okay that's an ego oriented teacher um, and it says now this is no less true if you're afraid to teach than if you are frankly out to dominate so whether you're a teacher who's afraid to teach or you're teaching in order to dominate, it's the same thing. You're an ego-oriented teacher. Now, it says the form of the symptom is only a reflection of your particular way of handling your separation anxiety. So 
I was talking about in the last two sessions of this section about um, your um, fear of teaching. And of course, a miracle says we have a fear of teaching, which is really our separation anxiety. We're afraid to teach because as we share this with others, it's going to change us. As you teach others, as you share what you want to learn, it will change you. Of course, Michael says that's the reason you're afraid to share what it is you want to learn. Whatever it is you want to learn. Do you want to learn peace? Do you want to learn healing? Do you want to uh, learn growth? Do you want to learn oneness? Whatever it is, we're really afraid to share that because we're, we, it will change us. We're afraid of change. And in the earlier two sections it said we're afraid of change because our first experience of change was not so great. Our first experience of change was from the ecstasy and the complete fulfillment of oneness with God. And then our first change was into a body where we were separate and needy and incomplete and hungry and afraid. So our first experience of change was from the ecstasy of oneness into the pain and lack and deprivation and death of separation of change. So, is saying that that's our real fear of teaching. Our real fear of sharing and teaching what we want to learn is that we know it's going to change us and we're afraid of change. Okay? So that's our real fear there. And whether our fear of teaching is coming in the form of um, I'm afraid to teach um, because of my own um, uh, anxiety or because I want to dominate, doesn't matter. The fear of teaching can take two forms. The fear of teaching can like, I'm teaching to dominate or the fear of teaching can take the form of like, I'm not gonna teach because Kuni's little on me. Okay, your fear of teaching can take two forms. Still the same thing, okay? Um, so, do you recognize that? One form of fear of teaching is, oh, nobody needs what I have to do. I, I'm not that great at it. Besides, there's much better teachers than me. Um, or is your fear of teaching taking the form of, I'm teaching so that I can dominate and be exalted and for my pride. So, you see that? You see the two forms the fear of teaching can take? Okay, that means the, full, the fear of sharing your gifts. The, sh the fear of sharing what you need to learn. Okay, great. Now, that is paragraph 11. So, questions or comments here? How are you doing? I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to take some water. Alrighty then. Well, then we'll just go on to paragraph 11. I mean, paragraph 12. So, paragraph 12 says, All separation, anxiety, which means fear of teaching and fear of learning, is a symptom of a continuing will to remain separated. Okay? I'm afraid to teach because I'm afraid to learn because I'm afraid to change because I'm, because what? Because I want to stay separate. I want to stay separate. I want to stay separate whether I'm exalted or depreciated. I want to be. I want to be different. I want to be separate. Okay, that's the core. Of course, miracle says our core problem. I'm afraid to share my gifts with the world for one reason. I want to stay separate, which means I want to stay special. Now, I may want to that that. Fear, that desire to stay separate and alone may take the form of, I want to be better. Or it may take the form of, I want to be worse than. It may take the form of, I want to be the king of the world. Or it may take the form of, I am the victim of the world. You see the two opposites that seem to be opposite but are really the same. I'm afraid to teach, I'm afraid to share because I want to be separate. I want to be different. And when I teach and when I learn, what is it I'm going to learn? That I'm not separate. I'm the same. I'm the same as my source 
and I'm the same as everything my source created. That's my real fear of teaching and learning. As I face my fear and I teach what I want to learn, what's ultimately going to happen is I'm going to relinquish my ego. I'm going to relinquish that idea that I'm different and I'm separate. And that's where all fear comes from. You know, all my fear is coming from, I want to be better because I think I'm different. Or I'm worse, I think I'm different. It's all the same. It's all like I'm different. And to say I'm different, to say I'm special, is to say I'm separate, which is to say I am going to die. <laughs> and I should be afraid. So that's what the real fear of teaching and learning really comes down to is I just want to stay separate. I want to be different. You know, I'm afraid that as one and as one with everyone and everything, I'm going to lose my very identity, which is to me death because I believe my life is my separate identity. You know, if somebody, if, you know, if I, something came to me and said, hey, listen, you could experience the ecstasy of oneness right now forevermore if you're just willing to give up your identity as Anna. What do you think, I'm, how do you think I'm going to respond? I'd be like, oh, maybe later. <laughs> maybe later. I got a hot date later. You know, I got some things I want to do, you know, as Anna. You know, I'm afraid to be one. I'm afraid to join because I think that my separate identity is who I am. And so I'm, I'm a, now I'm afraid to teach and learn the Course in Miracles because ultimately that's going to lead me to the relinquishment of the idea that I'm separate. And I, you know, I don't know. I know about identity Anna, you know, separate identity Anna. <laughs> You know, um, and even though she suffers most of the time and, you know, she's always <laughs> obsessed with lack and not enoughness, I don't know about unity of consciousness, you know. So, so our fear of teaching and learning really is a manifestation of our separation anxiety. All right. Now, um, then it says this. It says, your, uh, this cannot be repeated too often. Why? Because you haven't learned it. Why is A Course in Miracles repeating the truth so often? You haven't learned it. Because you haven't learned it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. A little bit slow. Uh, you're saying I'm slow, <laughs> Course in Miracles. Yes, I'm saying you're slow. Why is A Course in Miracles repeating itself so often? And why is it that it can't be repeated often enough? Because we haven't learned it. What haven't we learned? We haven't learned that our complete fulfillment and our ecstasy and our happiness comes from realizing that we're not separate. Okay. Now, it says, you are afraid to teach. Okay. You're afraid to teach. You're afraid to teach Brie. I'm afraid to teach. You're all afraid to teach. Okay. Yes. Did you know that? <laughs> okay. Now, I know we in this room are aware of our fear of teaching. Yes. Okay. Um, now it's going to tell us why we're afraid to teach. Now, why are you afraid to teach? Why are you afraid to give your gifts to the world? Why are you afraid to share your gifts with the world, the things you really want to learn, the things you love and enjoy? Why are you afraid to teach? Why are you afraid to learn? Okay. It says... Um, it says, it's going to tell us why. Because, dun da da. It says, you're afraid to teach because you are afraid of the impression that your ego will make on other egos. I'm afraid of the impression I'm going to make on them. Mm -hmm. That's so true. For years, I was so afraid to do live streaming. I was, I was so, I was terrified to post my classes on YouTube. And then I had to go through another layer of fear of doing live streaming. And then now what? Because I was afraid of the impression that my image, which means my ego, was going to make on their ego, their images. Right. I mean, to the point where I went through my Facebook friends and any family 
that was in my Facebook feed, I did. I said, unfriend, unfriend, <laughs> unfriend, unfriend, unfriend. And my family were like, why would you unfriend me? Because like, I'm afraid of the impression that my ego is going to make on your ego. Oh, wow, yeah. You know, That's I'm right. afraid of the impression that my image of myself, which is not who I am, is going to make on your image of yourself. Right. And that's we're afraid to share what we're about. You know, we all have something that is who we really are and it's coming from our own natural, innocent, brilliant genius. We all have that within us and we're all here to share that. Yeah. That's why you were born. But we're all afraid to do it. I'm afraid, I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that their image of themselves is gonna judge my image. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and so, so now I'm not gonna share it. I'm just gonna do the job that I was, that I applied for and was hired to do, you know, because that's safe and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Um, he says, that's why you're afraid to teach. Your fear of teaching. In other words, your fear of sharing that which you want to learn. That is our fear of teaching. Okay? And if we didn't have that fear, then we would be like, what is it I want to learn? I want to learn truth. I want to learn beauty. I want to learn art. I want to learn how to heal the world. I want to learn this. I want to learn my own power. Oh, now I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it my own unique way. And I'm going to do it fearlessly. Awesome. Total fulfillment. Okay. Taking my part in the healing of the world. Now, we're not doing that. That's our fear of doing that. The reason we're not doing that and doing that only is because we're afraid of the impression that our false self is going to make on their false self. And that's where we're embarrassed. We feel self-conscious. In other words, and why is that? It says, because we believe that the approval of others, the approval of our image, we, we believe that others' approval of our image oh, will exalt our image, and but that our separation anxiety will in increase. You also are afraid to teach because you believe that others' disapproval of you will lessen your anxiety, but at the cost of depression. Okay, so what does that say? All right. Okay, so it's talking here about our fear of teaching, which is very important because your teaching is how you learn. Okay, you can only fulfill your function here by teaching what you want to learn. And um, it's talking about why it is we're afraid to teach, why it is that we're afraid to share that which is our gifts and that which is what we want to learn, um, which is really why we're here. But one of the, it says you're afraid to teach, one, because you're afraid of uh, the impression that your image is going to make on their image. You're afraid they're going to judge you. You're afraid of being embarrassed. Um, and it says also you're afraid also of two things. You're afraid of, you're afraid of their approval. Mm -hmm. You're afraid that their approval will exalt your image, meaning your ego. So in other words, one fear that I have of teaching is I'm afraid that people are going to be like, you're so amazing. Oh, you're so awesome. You're so, you're above us. You're so great. You're so wonderful. You're better than me. So that's one fear, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason why we're afraid of that is that we're afraid that as they exalt us, that we will feel even more separate, even more anxious. Why? Because as people go, you're so amazing, you're better than us, you're wiser than us. The Course in Miracles says your, se your experience of separa separation increases, which means now you're up here and they're down here, and now you have farther to fall. So I'm afraid that people will think I'm so awesome because now there's pressure. Now there's a height from which I can fall, and I don't want to do that. Then it says the other thing is we're also afraid, oh, it says we feel more comfortable with if people were to be like, oh, I don't know, you're not so great. 
Oh, Marion Williams is so much better than you. Marion Williams, and she's such a better teacher. It says we feel more comfortable with that. We feel more comfortable with them not exalting us, but disapproving. Ah, so here we are. We're afraid of people exalting us, but we feel more comfortable with people disapproving of our sharing, our teaching. Why? Because, and it says, and, and because now we feel more comfortable with that. Now there's no place to fall, but at the cost of being depressed. Why? Because now you're like, oh, I gave my gifts and nobody, and they disapproved. Oh, now I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm sad. And now I'm sad. Oh, oh I did my course class and nobody came. Yeah, nobody I came. wrote my book and nobody read it, and so now I'm depressed. <laughs> Even though I feel more comfortable with that. Mm. Okay? So, uh, you know, yeah, I feel more comfortable when people don't watch or they disapprove or they don't buy my book or they don't watch my class or whatever. I feel more comfortable with that but at the cost of being depressed because people disapproved in my perception. And it says, these are our fear of teaching and these are our sabotages of teaching. Okay, so can you guys relate to that in terms of fears and sabotages for putting it out there? Oh, Bree says she can. Okay, awesome. Anybody else out there can relate to the fear of teaching. You know, I'm afraid that they're gonna love me and then exalt me and then now there's all this pressure and I'm, I'm gonna fall from a high perch and that hurts, okay? And then there's also this like, well, I'm afraid of teaching and so I'm more, I'm gonna set it up where people are gonna disapprove. You know, I'm gonna share with the people who would disapprove. You know, sometimes uh, one of the ways we sabotage our teaching and sharing is we only share what we're doing with people we know will disapprove. You know, I just wrote this new poem. I'm going to call my dad up and share with my dad. You know, my dad's like, uh, I have no idea what it's saying <laughs> at all. And besides, your punctuation sucks. <laughs> Okay, now, oh, oh, so now I'm not going to share it anymore. <laughs> and, then, and then I put it in a drawer and I never share it again. Okay? Ever. That, ever. <laughs> That's called fear of teaching. That's called fear of sharing. Why? Because you feel more of, uh, comfortable with the disapproval. You feel more comfortable with the disapproval. But um, at the cost of you're now you're going to feel depressed because you're not going to feel seen. You're not going to feel heard. And you're not going to really learn what it is that you were sharing. Because remember, you, if, to, to learn it, you're gonna have to share it. You don't learn anything by yourself. Yeah. It's only as you share these ideas that you go, oh, they're actually true. Ah, and then you experience the benefit of them. All right, so can anybody relate to that? The, all the sabotages that we do, you know, in our fear of learning and our fear of teaching. You guys can relate to that. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Quanta says, what will their ego think about my ego? Exactly. And Stephanie says, hello, Bree. Right on. Beautiful. All right. So, um, okay. Now, now our teacher, I'm going to finish this last paragraph, paragraph 13, and then we'll stop for the evening. Now our teacher is going to speak to us directly, okay? Now the good teacher, the really good teacher, the genius teacher within us is going to speak to us directly. Can you ready for that? Yes. Okay. So, the brilliant genius loving teacher within us is saying this, I would not be able to devote myself to teaching if I believed either of those blatant misperceptions <laughs> that Anna so so uh, interestingly described, okay? The two blatant misperceptions, right? I'm afraid that they're going to be, think I'm awesome and because of the pressure and the, and the, and the fear. And then I'm also um, afraid of them disapproving of my sharing because I'm, that's gonna lead to depression. Those are two blatant misperceptions, two blatant sabotages to your teaching, which you're gonna have to do to learn. 
Now, our teacher says, I wouldn't be able to devote myself to teaching if I believed either of those blatant misperceptions. And you, you will not be able to be a devoted teacher as long as you maintain either of those. I want you to worship me, or I want you to not notice me. Okay, we got both of those going on. I have both of those going on. I want people to go, oh, Bravo, you're so amazing. But I also want people to not notice me. Okay. Um, and if you have been a student of mine for any time, you will re recognize that. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, why doesn't she put her stuff out? Like, what is wrong with her? You know? Um, okay. So, um, and so, uh, you know, you cannot be a, a devoted teacher if you perceive, if you, what, if you do what, as long as you maintain either of those blatant misperceptions about what you're sharing. And then it says, and our teacher says to us, I am constantly being, I am constantly being perceived as a teacher to be either exalted or rejected, but I don't accept either perception for myself. Now, I'll go do 14 as well since it's necessary. Now, now our teacher is also speaking directly to us, okay, as teachers. Your worth is not established by your teaching. Period. <laughs> Period. What is our teacher saying to us? Okay, we're talking about you as a teacher, right? We're talking about you as a devoted teacher. You as a devoted teacher. We're talking about being a devoted teacher. And our teacher says, your worth is established by being a teacher, by your teaching. Whether you're a good teacher or not a good teacher at all, your worth is not established by your teaching. Period. So whether I'm a good teacher or a bad teacher, I don't have anything to do with my worth. Okay, good to know. Now our teacher is telling us something we need to know about our teaching. Our worth was established by God, not how good or bad of a teacher you are. Your worth is not established by your teaching. Your worth is established by God. So take that pressure off your teaching. Take that pressure off your teaching. Your worth isn't established by that. Your worth is established by God, period. And as long as you dispute that your worth is established by God, not how good of a teacher you are, then everything you do relative to teaching and learning will be fearful. You'll be afraid to teach, which means you'll be afraid to learn. And so you'll sabotage your teaching, which means you'll sabotage your learning. Why? Because you think your worth is established by your teaching, and it's not. Good to know. So teachers of God, teachers of Course in Miracles, teachers of Truth, remember that your teaching is does, your worth is not established by your teaching. So just take that pressure off of it before you are going to share your gifts with the world, however you do that. Just remember that before you do your class or write your book or do your painting or do whatever is your teaching or your demonstration to the world of what you want to learn. First, remember, my worth is not established by my sharing of this. Tell yourself that first. Because as, if, because as long as you uh, dispute that fact, then you're going to be afraid of teaching, which means you're going to be afraid of learning. Okay, which means you're going to be depressed and unfulfilled. It says, and you will be fearful of teaching and learning, and particularly you'll be afraid of any situation or relationship which lends itself to the fallacy of superiority or inferiority. Okay, so stop. Uh, burdening your teaching and making yourself afraid to share by still having the fallacy of superiority or inferiority. Your, your, your teaching has nothing to do with your, in, your inferiority or your superiority at all. Now it says, so you, teachers must be patient and repeat their lessons until they're learned. I am willing to do this, to repeat my lessons and teaching with you until you learn them because I have no right to set your learning limits for you. All right. So, um, it says, once again, nothing you do or think or will or make is necessary to establish your worth. Okay. Now, so, um, so that was a very important point about teaching and learning. Okay. Um, so, why are you afraid to teach? Why are you afraid to share what it is you want to learn? 
Okay, which is the same as saying what you what your natural gifts are. You know, what your natural gifts are are what you're here to share because that's what you want to learn. So why are you sabotaging? How are you sabotaging it? Why are you afraid to do it? How are you sabotaging it? Because you're associating how people respond to it with your worth. You know, it's like, oh, well, if I share my thing with the world and they re exalt me, well, then now I have to be afraid. Or if I share my thing with the world and they reject me, then, then my worth is in question. If you think your worth is in question, if you think your worth is established by your teaching or your learning or your sharing your gifts with the world, guess what? You're not going to do it. You're going to sabotage it. So if you want to share your gifts with the world so that you can learn them and integrate them and be fulfilled by them, you're going to have to remember that your worth is not established by what you give to the world, your teaching or your learning. Okay? Only then will you be Will you fearlessly be willing to share your gifts um, with the world without fear of being worshipped or being rejected? Okay, I'm afraid to share my gifts with the world because I'm afraid I'm going to be worshipped and then reject. And then, and then, what's the other side of being worshipped? Being crucified. Right. Okay, so yes, I, I never thought about that. You know, I thought about I'm afraid to share my gifts with the world because I'm afraid of being rejected. But the other one that for me, Venus and Virgo, 12th house, that is hidden from me is I'm afraid to share my gifts with the world because people, you know, because I'm afraid of being worshipped and then, uh, and then being crucified. Yes, okay. yes. So, um, and in other words, but it's all about worth. Yes. It's all about worth. I'm a, I, I, I believe my worth is in question. Yes. I believe my worth is dependent on my teaching. I believe my worth is dependent on whether people exalt me or reject me. I'm, I believe if people reject me, then my worth is not real. I also believe if people worship me then, and then crucify me, which I always do on the other side, P.S., um, that, that, that that makes my worth in question. It's all about my own doubt of my own worth. Yes. Wow. Okay. So if you want to release yourself from your fear of teaching, and if you want to release yourself from your ability to really learn and really evolve faster, then it really ultimately comes down to my worth is established by God, period. Not teaching, not learning, not anything that I do. Not any teaching, not any learning, not my worth is established by God. Right, right. Now, and so, if you want to be able to share your gifts with the world and, ex and then integrate them and learn from them yourself, then as you're getting ready to share your gifts with the world, however you want to do that, however it makes you happy to do that, um, then what you, when you start to feel that fear of teaching, that fear of putting yourself out there, of sharing your gifts, the thing to undo that fear of teaching is to say to yourself this, my worth is established by God. And say it over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it that you need to say my worth is established by God over and over and over? Because you haven't learned it. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> right? Why is it that A Course in Miracles needs you to repeat it over and over and over? Because you haven't learned it. Why does A Course in Miracles have to say the same thing over and over? Because you haven't learned it. Okay? Once you learn it, then we don't need the repetition. So if you are being called to share with the world that which you want to learn, then, and you have your own, you know, you have that sabotage tendency, temptation coming up, fear of being worshiped and crucified or fear of being rejected, um, fear of how people will perceive you, fear of how people will, um, how the impression you're making on others and they may reject you. If, if you're in that right now, which I bet you are, uh, <laughs> if you're watching, probably are, um, then, then hear what it's saying and say to yourself over and over, my worth is established by God, not teaching or learning, 
not teaching or learning, not, not anything you do or wish or make or teach or learning, nothing. Your worth is established by God. And the only reason that you're being called upon to teach, which means demonstrate, which means share, is because that's the only way for you to learn it. You're not doing it for them. You're not doing it for your pride. You're not doing it for your ego. You're not doing it so you can be, you know, more separate from separated from the crowd. You're doing it because that's the only way for you to learn it. Remember that, you know. And so remembering these things and hearing these things and doing what the Course in Miracles is saying to do in this section, that is the way to overcome the fear of giving your gifts to the world, of teaching the world what you need to learn. Because that's the only way to learn. All right. So that is it for this session here. And um, I'm so I'm so thrilled to see you all here, Melanie and Mary. Um, thank you for joining this healing circle. Um, and Ashley, hi Ashley. God knows we are worthy. Yes, God does know. Yes. Thank God. Thanks for the confirmation today. Thank you for the confirmation today, Ashley. Exactly. All right. So what we're going to do now is um, announcements and then we're going to do our integration meditation mm -hmm. where we take the ideas and we just use them. We just listen to them to music and do whatever the section said to do. Of Course in Miracles is just one big instruction manual. <laughs> so just remember that. You know, that's what I'll do a lot with the Course in Miracles. I'll read a paragraph and then I stop and I say, well, what did that just tell me to do? And then I do it. If it said, remember this, or think of this, or do this, I, go, I stop and I go, okay, I'm going to do that. And then I go to the next paragraph. Because that is what A Course in Miracles is for. It's an instruction manual. Okay. So, announcements are this. I teach two classes a week, Mondays and Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Both are live streamed. One's live at the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center in Denver. Um, and that is a Miracle Roulette, where we say a prayer asking Spirit to choose for us what we hear, knowing the Spirit knows what we need to hear in that moment. And then we do a random number generator, and then we see what Spirit chose, and that's every Monday. And that's also live streamed on Facebook from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. I also, on like this class, Wednesdays, from 7 to 8 30 p.m. Mountain Time um, but all of my classes you know and from years back you can find on YouTube so if you want to find all of my classes I've done on Facebook or all the classes I've done over the years then go to my YouTube channel Anna Kujawa my last name is spelled K-U-J-A-W-A and first when you get there subscribe and and then like and then whenever I lo load something, then you'll get a notification. So um, that's all available on my YouTube channel. So go there and like and subscribe. And then eventually I'll be doing YouTube live. So, um, so those, and also I'm a holistic psychotherapist and I have a psychotherapeutic niche where I offer um, psychotherapeutic support to people who could use some support through whatever transition they're going through right now, but they want it from A Course in Miracles perspective. And so I'm available for Miracles psychotherapeutic sessions one-on-one -on -one through Skype or on phone or in person, um, and I'm available for that. So if you want to uh, schedule one of those, then private message me here on Facebook or YouTube, um, um, so that's the way to reach me. The best way to reach me is to text me. Or you can go to my, my, uh, my website and find my phone number on the last page and text me. Best way to uh, reach me is texting me. And to all of you who've emailed me and called me and I didn't call you back, I'm so sorry. Um, the best way to connect with me is through text. So, um, awesome. So guys... So what I want you to do now is if you're not driving a car, I want you to close your eyes and take a breath. And we are going to take these ideas and we are going to use them. All right. So I want you to just breathe. And just feel. Feel. 
feel the moment. Feel how these ideas feel in your body, in your mind, in your heart. Feel how these ideas feel in your emotional body. Take a moment to just feel the spirit from which these ideas came. The love from which these ideas came. Let's feel the loving mind and the loving spirit from which these ideas came. These ideas came from a mind that knows you and loves you beyond your ability to comprehend or to conceive. And even though we can't comprehend or conceive the love that this mind has for us, we can still benefit from these ideas. We can still benefit from feeling the love that we can't understand. Beautiful. So now I want you to ask yourself this question. What is it that I really want to learn this lifetime? What is it I want to experience and accomplish this lifetime? What is it I, what is it that I know I am and I want to be that I haven't let myself be? I know I am that writer. I know I am that painter. I know I am that creator. But I haven't let myself be it. What is that? What is that thing? What is it that when you are sharing it, you lose track of time and space and you would do it even if no one ever paid you from now till forever? Because when you are doing it, you feel happy. You feel complete. You feel fulfilled. What is it that when you are sharing it, you feel one with the world? You feel one with everyone. What is it that when you're doing it, you feel a joy that you can't even understand? What is it? What is it that you really want to accept this lifetime? What is it you really want to learn for yourself this lifetime? Do you want to learn how to be free? Do you want to learn how to be happy? Do you want to learn how to be fulfilled? Do you want to learn how to be the genius artist creator that you know that you are? Do you want to learn how to do what you love and be sustained by it? Do you want to learn how to accept your own healing and your mind and your body? What is it that you want to learn this lifetime? What is it? Same thing as saying, what do you want to accomplish? What is it you really want for your life? What kind of life do you want? Beautiful. Now, of course, your miracles are saying for you to learn that, you're going to have to teach it, you're going to have to share it. You'll have to help other people to learn how to do that themselves. So, are you willing to look at your fear of teaching others how to have and be what you want to have and be? Are you willing to look at your fears of that? Are you willing to face your fears of the changes that will happen in you and in your life as you do that? 
as you help other people to be and have what you want to be and have? Are you willing to face your fears of the changes that will happen in you for the better toward that? you to tell yourself that's what I must do because that's what I'm here to do now I want you to now remind yourself that it doesn't matter what other people it doesn't matter the impression you make on other people it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether they exalt you or reject you. And when you say to yourself, it doesn't matter whether people exalt me or reject me. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Whether they put me above them or they put me below them, that's the same thing. That's my fear of being myself and giving my gifts to the world. It's the same fear. It doesn't matter whether people exalt me, worship me, or reject me. It doesn't matter because my worth is not dependent on that. My worth is established by God. So it doesn't matter whether people worship me, exalt me, or reject me. It doesn't matter. I'm going to give my gifts to the world. I'm going to teach and demonstrate what I want to learn because that's the only way I can learn. And I'm going to teach because that's how I need to learn. That's how I learn. I hereby release myself from the worries that people will worship me and crucify me, or that people will reject me. They're both the same, and they both don't matter, so I'm going to do it anyway. And breathe. I'm going to teach this and I'm going to share this because I need to learn it. That's all. Now, I don't want you to call upon your teacher, your higher self, and I want you to say, Teacher, I want you to teach with me so I can be a fearless teacher. I want you to teach with me and I want you to live with me, teacher. Because I want to be a teacher like you. I want to be a devoted teacher. I want to be a fearless teacher. I want you to teach with me. And I want you to live with me, teacher. You said you would. If I was willing to think with you. Okay. Then I want to think with you. I'm going to think with you, teacher. So that you will teach with me and live with me. And so you told me how to think with you and to think like you. And that was to say to myself, my worth is established by God. Not what I do or wish or think or make or anything. My worth is established by God. Okay. So I'm going to think with you and I'm going to think like you. And I'm going to do what you told me to do. And I'm going to share what I love, what makes me happy, what I want to learn. I'm going to share it without fear that people will worship me and crucify me. Without fear that people are going to reject me. I'm going to be, I'm going to think like you. So you will teach with me. Thank you, teacher. And breathe and feel. What does that feel like? Feel that empowerment as you feel the release of the fear of teaching. Feel what it feels like to stand, come into your own as a devoted teacher. Not a worried teacher, not an anxious teacher, not an embarrassed teacher, but a devoted teacher. What does that feel like? To be a devoted teacher. Free from anxiety, free from embarrassment, free from worry. I no longer 
teach for the effect on other people's egos. I only teach now so that I can learn what I want to learn. I want to be a devoted teacher instead of an ego-oriented teacher. Beautiful. This is you forgiving and releasing your fear of teaching. job guys yay for us yay yay for us uh, I thank you for joining this healing circle and the world thanks you for joining this healing circle because guess who benefits from you joining this healing circle you and all the world is one with you so good job thank you thank you thank you you're awesome you are the light of the world you are the light of the world and you are fulfilling your function right here right now so you can feel good about that i appreciate you i appreciate you more than i can say and i will see you next time i see you